Hello there, everyone. I am Carol, Crafty Grandma, and today we are doing part two of our Bench Pillows for All Seasons, um, book you can purchase from anniescatalog.com. We are doing the April pillow, which pillow cover, which is down here. Um, and today's activity is going to be kind of dull and boring. Um, what I am doing is taking all of the applique patterns, which is why you have to purchase the book to do this activity, and, sorry, it's upside down, and I am copying the applique onto my heat and bond, and then um, putting it onto fabric. So, depending upon how fast this goes, we may or may not get to actually doing any sewing today. Um, we'll have to set up the machine to do our, our correct stitches and all that good stuff. Sorry, this is the leftover gelato container, or empty gelato container that I use for my buttons. This has half inch buttons in it and it was wobbling. Apparently when you put these through the washing dishwasher they uh, get bumps in the bottom so they don't sit flat. That's just weird. But anyway, all right. So heat and bond. You can also purchase Uh, steam a seam too. And this is what I always used to use. And I commented one day with all of these appliques, because I've been working on these since uh, June of last year, I believe. Um, and there is a playlist out there if you want to go play that, look at them all. Um, and I, I made a comment that I wish that this came in long rolls. So I went out and I was looking and it turns out this I think does also, but this heat and bond was cheaper. So I bought the heat and bond and I like it 10 times better. Um, this one, even though it says on it, it doesn't leave gook. It says bond permanently when ironed. Sewing is not required, but okay. That is not true. I have found anytime I have used this steam seam, it needs to have something holding it down. Um, sew without gumming the needle. That is also inaccurate. Every time I have used this, I end up getting gook on my needle as I'm sewing. I apologize. There is a cat wandering around doing something. I'm not certain what she's up to. Ah, there's birds outside the window. She's chasing the birds. Um, but anyway, so. This does have an advantage because you can put it through a printer. So let's say you didn't like drawing like I'm going to do now. Um, you didn't want to, to mess with all that. Um, this would allow you to scan in the applique and print it onto the steam seam too. And then put it on your fabric and cut around the line. But I find its negatives outweigh its positives. The problem with the heat and bond, sorry, she is chasing a bird and it's hilarious to watch. Um, the problem with the heat and bond is that when you take the paper off and put it on the fabric, it does not stick until you use the heat of the iron. So um, basically it's kind of like with the steam seam you can put it on and press it on and it holds. So I could put it up here and step back and look at it and go yeah I like where that's placed, no I want it over a little bit, so on and so forth. You can't do that with this one. Um, but I can always just set it right in front of me on my table and, and look at it that way. 
which is fine. I just prefer being able to see it up. And that's a personal preference. It's not something that everybody prefers. Okay, so let's see. I need, first thing I need is a puddle. So there's the puddle. And let's get you, oh, turn picture, cancel. I thought that it allowed me to see that. It does. I know it does. No. Oh, okay. Apparently, I didn't save it that way. Get rid of that. There we go. All right, there we go. Now, for those of you that have watched me, oh, I'm gonna be off to the side, doesn't really matter, does it? There we go. So those of you that have watched me in the past, you know that I like to use my bricks on, whoops, blurry, I'm blur. No, nope, it's not going to unblur. It's focusing on something else. There we go. Frixon pen. Love my Frixon pens. The problem is if you use this on, on the heat and bond, when you go to press it onto the fabric, it will go away because heat makes the Frixon go away. So you can't use your Frixon pens on the heat and bod. Therefore, pull out the old-fashioned handy-dandy pencil. The problem is I am going to get a black mark all the way along my hand. I guarantee it. Because when you do this, it makes a mess. So the first thing here is our puddle. Puddle. And it says place on fold over here. So this is a big puddle. And in order to not make it so big that you had, couldn't use the other stuff, they've made it on a fold. So all we do is draw a line. Trace the design that they have come up with. Don't forget, and puddle. So we know what it is. Really didn't need that line under there, but hey. Now, I need two boots. So here's our boot. And again, all we're gonna do is trace around. Do I need to reverse either of them? No, they could both go the same way. second boot.
And I am in no way, shape, or form being very accurate. I mean, I'm getting as close to the line as I can. But you don't have to be perfect. You do not have to have it exactly on the line at every location. All right. Boot. Two. Next thing I need is an umbrella. Okay. Here. And I try and use the least amount of this stuff as I can. So I just sort of fit it in. or one L in umbrella? Two L's. Okay. One umbrella interior. Let's see. There it is. It's down here. Looks like a crown. Okay. Next one, one umbrella handle. There it is. Next, one bird. Where's the bird? Oh, <laughs> that's the bird. off the line there. Uh, let's make sure we get his head nice and big. Bird. All right. One wing. It's in the fold. Hold on. So there's my wing. And the wing is going to fit nicely right in here somewhere. Now, the, I want to make sure you understand that these applique patterns also have some lines in them. So like the wing here has this dotted line that goes through it. That is because later on, when we do some finishing work, that's where some quilting is going to go. 
or so they won. We'll have to see. All right, one short stem, three long stems, reverse two of the long stems. Okay, where's the short stem? Oh, it's all one stem. So again, to save paper on their printing, the short stem only goes to here, whereas the long stem goes all the way down. Let's get the short stem done first. Squeeze that in up here. Three long stems, reversing two of them. Okay. So long stem. We need to have room for it. There it is. Okay, so that's long stem. Long stem one. Two reverse. To reverse the stem, I need to have light coming from underneath something. Usually, in the past, I have taken it over to the window and done it on the window. But I can't do that on camera. So one month, like four or five months ago, when they asked me to reverse it, I figured out a way to do this. So let's go to the sewing machine. And the first thing I have to do is my light that I have here in the back. Wow, that wasn't covered up and no kitty cats got onto it. That's impressive. I have this light here in the back. And I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to put it underneath my table. Sorry, not there. There we go. Underneath my table. So now my clear table has a light underneath it because I don't, I can't draw, oops, you can't see this, this direction, it wants me to reverse it. So I need to have the paper upside down. And now, with the light underneath, I can see the stem, and I can copy it onto my paper. And where I want it, it's not going to work with this. So hold on. Let's see. I'm going to need to go this way. Yes, I could just cut a piece of the paper off and use it that way, but I'm always determined to use the least amount of steam as as I can. All right, there we go. drawing it in reverse. Long reverse. One. And Excellent. Okay. Let's lift this light up, put it back where it belongs.
silly technology. All right. And come right back here. There we go. So here we go. This one is drawn regular, and this one is in reverse. So that's what you have to do sometimes is flip them over, because again, they don't want to use up any more paper than they have to. The book is costing them money. So that's where we go with that. OK. Back over to April. What else do we need? Three leaves. Leaves. Where are the leaves? Where are the leaves? There's the flower. Ah! The leaf, leaves and the wings are the same shape. I should have realized that when I was drawing them. Okay. This was a wing. Forgot to mark it. There we go. Let's fit our leaf in here. Leaf one. How many did I need? Three? Yes, three. There's one. There's two. And three. Okay, four flowers. So this is our flower. One. There's two. There's three. And four. Two boot interiors. That's that little piece there, and I don't think I've got anywhere else to fit it. So the boot interior and the umbrella interior are going to give depth to our uh, quilt. And 
last, last thing we have is the beak. Excellent. So now I can fold this back up. Put that back with the book. Well, not nearly as bad as it usually is. All right. These are my paper scissors. You can't read that from there, but these, they say paper on them. Um, so since I'm using this stuff, I like to go ahead and use my paper scissors. And roll up the unused portion. back in its little bag. And this is the extent of how much I used, so I didn't use that much of it. It looks like it's you know, from one to another about 18 inches wide. Um, oh, I don't know. And it's 17 inches across, which is just how it comes. Um, but so, yeah, didn't use all that much. If you don't care about spending money, you can put these wherever you want. I prefer to have them as tightly as possible so that I get the most value for my spending. Okay, so now here are the fabrics that we're going to use to make all of these appliques. The first one is blue. And as I said, it only called for an eighth of a yard, or fat eighth, fat eighth. No, so not even an eighth of a yard, a fat eighth. Um, but I really liked this fabric, so I got it. And I ended up with two yards of it, so you may see me wearing it as a shirt at some point in time because I just really like this fabric. But There's the fold. All right. You do not, where did I have, there, there, there. So, there, there. You do not want to cut on the line. You want to cut around your item. but not directly on the line. I say that and I am going to cut on the line on the fold because in this case that does need to be cut straight. Okay, here we go. Here is the fold. It's up at the top here. Here is our template. And that's, you can see that I didn't cut on the lines yet because we're going to do that later. So the first thing I need to do is get this on the heat. But I'm not taking all this fabric over there because I don't need all this fabric over there. So I am going to cut around there. And now I have all this fabric left over to do something with. That's out of the way.
and we go over to our iron. So keeping it on the fold, over to our iron. Now my iron cools down when it's been sitting upright for too long. So we're gonna give it a minute to warm up again. On the fold. You do not want to have the paper, the heat and bond, laying over your fabric because it will bond to your ironing board cover and you don't want that to happen because then you have to make a new ironing board cover, which I still have to do and I haven't gotten around to it yet. is taking its own sweet time to heat up today. It is finally warm. So this is the time I mentioned if you had drawn your applique with your Frixon pen, doing this would get rid of all the lines and you wouldn't know where to cut. So that's why you wait until, or that's why you don't use a Frixon pen for applique. Use it for everything else, but not applique. Test it to see that it's stuck, and it is. So you just pick at a spot wherever you want, and you make sure that it's stuck together. And you see we still have our design on here. And now we cut out our applique. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, in the book, it actually has a layout specifically for, it's got how far away from the bottom and the side this needs to be. So this is the base of all the other appliques. So I'm thinking we might go ahead and put this on our fabric our base, our pillow cover, what it, uh, the pieced squares that we have up on the wall. And I messed up. You know I love to mess up. It's just something fun and interesting for me to do. So here's how I messed up. I should have made this all the way because now Half of it isn't going to stick to the pattern. But I think I'm okay. What I'll do is, since I'm going to put uh, stitches around it anyway, um, the other half will stay because I'm going to put the stitches on. So that's, that's a lot of work. Okay. So here on the bottom, it shows how many inches from the bottom and how many inches in I'm supposed to put this and what direction it goes in. So it goes in this, it sits on the wall that way. Here's where I'm going to pull out my Frickson pen. 
and I need a ruler. So from this side, I need to go over this far. And from the bottom, I need to go this far. And keep in mind, this pen will go away as soon as I put any heat on it. So this is going to go right about there. That's going to be our puddle. And since this doesn't stick, I need to take it over here and put it on my ironing board. Take off the paper. Leave the sticky stuff, but take off the paper. Come on. I always have this problem with this paper. It never fails. OK. So the heat and bond is still only on one side because I'm stupid. I line it up on one side. I line it up with the other line. And now I take my heat and I press. So this side is going to be stuck. This side is going to be flapping in the wind until I sew it on. So we are going to get some sewing in today, because I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Didn't leave it on long enough. It's stuck over on that side. And remember I told you there were going to be four squares that you were never going to see again? This is why. They're completely covered up. So it didn't make any difference whatsoever what I put under there. I actually could have put one big long strip if I wanted to, but... I went ahead and used up the fabric. I was going to have to cut it anyway, so no big deal. This top area is just not heating up. here and get rid of my fricks on pen marks. All right. Now. Good. Now we have to go to the sewing machine. So the first thing I want to do is I want to replace my thread, because this is my piecing thread. I am going to replace it with a standard cotton, so 50 weight thread. And where's my blue? Ah, there's my blue. And I have a nice dark blue that I'm going to use. And it's, again, I'm using cotton thread. I'm using it because I want the whole top to be cotton. 
And now I need a different foot. Where is my applique foot? No, that's not it. There's my applique foot. So instead of using the foot that has the one little dot in the middle, I am using a wide foot so I can go back and forth and do the blanket stitch. I am going to leave the 70 universal 70 needle I have on, on here. It's not going to hurt anything having a smaller needle. There we go. Now I need to decide what stitch to use, and I'm going to use my blanket stitch because that's the one I like. So on my machine, I have to go to here. And it tells me, shows me what the stitch is going to look like, so that's good. And it tells me I should use interfacing, and I'm not going to, which means it's going to pucker and I'm going to fuss at some point in time, but we'll get over it. I'm just going to start, you can start anywhere you want. That's an awful lot of thread sticking out. There we go. And I am going to use my fix button, which allows it to, to knot at the beginning of the stitch. down. There we go. looking at this and thinking I probably should have made it wider, but it'll be okay. So quilting has been around for a very, very long time, and all the newfangled gadgets and stuff that we have were obviously not available when this started. So the reason appliques like this get stitched is because even though we have the ability to just have sticky stuff and have it stick on and look fine, when it was, when originally they started doing appliques, they obviously didn't have the sticky stuff. So this is how they attached it was, and I, they would hand stitch most of the, when it first started, um, they would hand stitch the piece of fabric onto the other piece of fabric. So traditionally you do use a blanket stitch, which is what I am using here, but you can use any stitch you like. Um, I, I don't know what you could, would use. Uh, I'm just so used to seeing it this way that if you were to use a different stitch, I'm not certain which one to use. 
A zigzag would kind of look cool, I guess. Um, but I don't know if it would define... I don't know. But like I said, you can use, you can experiment, you can do different things when attaching applique. It's totally up to you. It's your quilt. Now this fabric has a bit of a crinkle to it and it's making it not want to lay as straight as it should. So it's a little more challenging in this part that doesn't have the sticky stuff on it. Hopefully that's in a spot where something's going to go over it. too carried away. Thank you. 
And as I get to the end here, I am going to knot the last stitch. So over here, this, oops, I got too close. Fabric didn't all get inside the stitching. It wrinkled up. I had more fabric than I had space at that point. So that's what I'm saying. I hope something's there and it looks like the bird's going to be there and cover that up. Over here. I was going way too fast, and it's totally off the fabric. Now since we are in the current age and we have the sticky stuff underneath, I'm not terribly worried about that because it's going to stay put. And I also think, based on the design, yeah, the umbrella is going to cover that up. So that's going to be fine. Okay, so we've got our puddle put on. Now we need to take care of getting the other stuff cut out. So the first thing it lists are the boots. So this is what I'm using for the boots. They show a solid yellow, well, no, they do have white polka dots on it. But I know I've seen kids with little galoshes that are yellow with pink polka dots. So that sounded like fun to me. So I need my boots cut out. Again, do not cut on the line, just cut around them. I'm going to get the leaf off of here because we'll be using that later but not now. And then boot number two. other things out of the way. And let's see. Position the puddle. Place the umbrella interior, umbrella handle, and umbrella at the right side of the puddle. So it actually says to do the umbrella first. And that kind of makes sense. But, well let's just get these applied and cut out. We'll worry about putting them all on the d later. Okay. So with this fabric, you have to make sure you go on, put these on the wrong side of the fabric. So this is the wrong side. This is the right side. You need to put the applique on the wrong side. That way, it will be sticky on the wrong side, not on the right side. I tell you this because I have actually done this a couple different times, where I put the applique on the right side of the fabric instead of the wrong side of the fabric. And then when you go to put it onto the quilt, you're like, but it's the wrong side of the fabric showing. All right, well, that warms a little bit. Let's see. Pink dot is the umbrella. So yeah, they've got a different fabric. I, I really liked this pink with the black dots on it, so I went with that. There's my umbrella.
Now, letting it sit on there is fine. Just don't walk away and, you know, forget that it's there. I'm right here, so I'm okay with it. into the yellow bin. Now I'm going to need a little bit of pink. And obviously you can use scraps of fabric. As I said on part, in part one, I was not happy with any of the fabric I had to match my vision of what this was going to look like. So I went ahead and bought new fabric. And I think it was somewhere around $60. But all of the fabric that I purchased, um, I'm going to have more than enough left over that I can make and use it in other things and probably quite a bit of other things because the yellow and the pink here I ended up having to buy a yard of that was the minimum purchase for that um, the blue and the white I had to purchase a minimum of two yards um, so that's definitely more than I needed. But again, you find uses for this stuff later on. Um, dark gray, umbrella, ah. So I didn't use any of these. It says dark gray for the umbrella handle. That's kind of a dark gray. Ooh, kitty cats. That's ranking right up there. That's, is there anything else that jumps out? Oh, wait, there's, <laughs> I think there's something that has rain on it. There is. I don't think the handle's wide enough, though. Well, it's not wide enough for the cloud to actually work, but it is wide enough. Let's see. Do this, it'll show the rain falling down. All right, so it has to sit right there. Hopefully I got that in the right spot. Excellent. Um, purple, a bird. Where's the bird? And dark purple is the wing. Alright. 
how are we doing over here? You on? Ah, here. Yes. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. It might show up correctly and look nice. That's cool. That That's an unexpected joy of piece of joy. All right, so I need a purple and a dark purple. Come on. There we go. the dark purple and this does not have a right side or a wrong side so that's going to be good and do I want to use that one not as much of a contrast as I'd like there to be there we go I like that better okay so the bird goes on the regular purple I'm going to need to trim down my paper here. Oh, come on. This bird has been a barely fit on this charm square. But it's going to work. I know it is. I have faith in myself. There we go. The wing is going to be out of this dark purple. And again, this doesn't have a right side or a wrong side, so it doesn't matter where you place it. Are we all on there? Yep. All right. Bird. Wing. Medium green are the stems in light green. Let's see. So this is what I've been using for stems for the past few months. This jelly roll. And let's see. That's the leaves are supposed to be a light green. Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay, the wing. Okay, stems, stems, stems. Long stem, short stems over here, yes it is. whole piece of paper. Totally wasted. I know it's not that big, but still. It's annoying. Right, there's all the stems. are the leaves. Yeah, so. ah, this one's already been cut a little bit, obviously already used as a stem. These two I'm leaving together, these two stems. I'm going to see if I can fit them on, and I cannot, so I have to cut them apart. the thing about stems. They usually have a curve to them to make them look more realistic, and that tends to mean you cannot get more than one on a jelly roll strip at a time. Uh, 
Okay, that one can go there. Put this one over here. Another long stem that way. And let's see if we can get the short one on here too. Trim it up a little bit, it should fit. And these two leaves, I'm gonna leave together and fit all three leaves onto the lighter green fabric. And those are all on there. They are, oh, that little one's, eh, should be fine. All right, so my jelly roll that gets used all the time goes away. What do we need? White tonal. Now, I just bought regular white, but it says white tonal. Let's see. Um, do I have any? No, I really don't have anything in there. Is there anything in this stack of stuff that is more of a tonal? Let's see. I used all those for the background, so that's not going to work. Those won't work. But these squares, is there anything in here white? It all looked really dark to me when I was looking through it which was why I actually didn't use it for the background because it was all just too dark. Well, and then the question comes, do I really need to use white? I don't want to use the actual gray because the gray is in the background and that would look kind of silly. There are some blues in here that are kind of neat looking. Hmm. Or do I just go with plain white? I can do that too. I can go with any color I wanted actually. Let's see. Um, let's go on to the next one first. The boot interiors. And the beak. Are all supposed to be a dark yellow. That's orange. That's a dark yellow. And I forgot the umbrella interior. I skipped over that piece. And this is going to be where I, I get challenging because the umbrella, where is it at? Oh, there it is. The umbrella interior is wider. You can't see the printing, but it's wider. And it's supposed to be a dark pink so that it contrasts with the pink of the umbrella. Or it stands out, gives depth. That's why these are dark, because this dark pink against our light pink boots is going to make it stand out. my solid white I'm still thinking on. All right, so let's see. Is there a pink in here? It's not, well, it's kind of pink. I need two of them to be the same shade, which seems to be a challenge. This, 
thing has a bunch of different shades in it. Okay, maybe that. Are those the same color? They are not. Is this the same color as that? No. So it looks like every piece of fabric in this stack is a different color. Those are really close, though. And how will that contrast with the umbrella? So this would be the, the interior. This will be the exterior. I think that'll work. And here's my problem. This is why I have these charm packs, and I don't have a dark pink. Let me verify. I do not. Eh, no, I do not have anything that would go with that pink. So I'm going to need to match these two up. I'm going to trim them so they have a straight edge, because right now they've got a scalloped edge on them. And I want a straight edge on them. I'm going to take them over here and place them down with the straight edges butted up against each other. As best as I can. And then I want to make sure, I think it's that middle, because this the umbrella handle is going to cover up most of this. And it is on this point. So I'm going to match up the point with the seam. And there we go. That took more effort than I thought it was going to, because I thought the stack would have matching colors, but it really just, it has a whole bunch of, I mean, it's a nice stack. It's got a whole bunch of different things that I'm going to be able to use for applique. But, because I would never, I don't think I would ever make a quilt out of something like that. That's just not, not my style. All right, so it does have a little bit of a gap. Yeah, and you can even kind of see it on the camera between where the two pieces are. But as I said, it's pretty much going to be covered up by the handle, so I'm okay with that. Now, back to the flowers. What am I going to do with the flowers? In the version of the book, the flowers kind of blend into the background because they're white and they used some what looks like solid white fabric in their square piecing. Um, I'm half wondering if I shouldn't make them in a bunch of different colors just to give it more. But with the pink and the yellow and the purple bird, I'm afraid it would get too busy. So maybe just stick with... Uh, I just don't know what to do. What time is it? Okay, we're still, we still have time. It's kind of a rust color. I don't think I, it's not bad. One of the flowers goes on top of the boot, uh, or on top of a boot though, and I don't know if that would be too much. Where was that, those blue fabrics? There were, there were blue fabrics in here somewhere. Yeah, definitely don't want that brown. 
that might not be bad. I could do some with the actual flowers in the flowers. I like that idea. That's too dark. All right. So we're going to go that way. We're going to use that one. It's not a dark blue. It's not a, it's kind of, it's a grayish blue almost. Oops, hold on. There we go. So now I'm going to trim around these flowers. Because originally I was just going to throw them all onto the thing and cut them out later. Now I want to fussy cut a little bit. If I'm going to use this, I want to use some of the flowers inside the flower. Okay, fabric upside down, and a flower. Flowers inside the flower. There we go. There's one. Oh, dang. Well, oh, maybe if I do it that way. Yep, that'll work. Excellent. Now this fabric goes up here, out of the way. And we're still going to need the book because we need to make sure that we place things where they need to go. These rulers can step aside. Thing is attached. Wonderful. Okay, so now comes cutting. Oop, that flower's not quite on there yet. It says, position the puddle, we did that. Place the umbrella interior, umbrella handle, and umbrella at the right. So we need the interior, the umbrella, and the umbrella handle. Yeah, I think that's going to look nice. So umbrella handle. Umbrella handle goes this way. Um, and we've got a cloud and some raindrops falling down on our umbrella handle. So that was fussy cut for that. The umbrella itself, we don't care.
doesn't go there. That goes in the garbage can. So our umbrella is going to be upside down. And then our umbrella interior, our made up fabric. I'm still not crazy about this color though. I really would have preferred a pink to a red because it's just, it's very red. All right, so the directions say to take the umbrella and put the umbrella interior over it, and under it, under it. There we go. Now, It doesn't really say how to do this. It just says place them on the quilt or on the, yeah, it just says. Place them to the right of the puddle. So I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna move, actually, I'm gonna move this out of the way first. Pull this down. What's happening out here? Sorry, somebody stopped on the road. That doesn't happen very often. They started driving again, so apparently they just forgot something. Okay. And this goes underneath that. So this, this handle will cover up completely that, se that seam, so we're all good there. All right, um, this goes towards the bottom. And this goes inside. All right, so everybody gets their paper torn off now. we have it placed the way I want it. That there. Put this right down the middle. And then our umbrella handle. That kind of blends in. I'm going to have to use a dark color to make it stick out. Okay, so there's all that. And apparently a flower stem, one of the, oh, this is a long and a short. So a long stem and a short stem. I'm going to need those.
short stem. I'm getting warm. No, yeah. It's not too bad in here. But it is a little bit warmer than I like. I wonder if the air conditioner got turned off. Let me, I'm going to have to go look at that. All right, throw this extra fabric away. Let me see if the air conditioner is off or not. Nope, it's on. I'm just experiencing more heat than I enjoy. All right, I need one of the leaves. two of the flowers. And the reason I have to do all of these now is because the long stem goes inside the umbrella and then the short stem juts off of the long stem so those that has to be so the short stem has to be underneath the long stem and the flowers both have to be under the stems so all of these things need to be in place before I apply heat. Otherwise, things will be stuck down that I need pick in order to, that I won't, so I won't be able to put things underneath them. Excuse me. So that's why I have to go through this. I have to do all of these at the same time. Let's see. I want, That's a bright pink flower. Okay. I want the. I have pink dots on there. So I think I want the blue for the boot. Let's do. Let's do this one. I do not understand my neighbors. We have a perfectly good sidewalk and they walk on the road. It makes no sense to me. All of these. So first the long stem. And I could be placing all of these over on my table over there, but because of the heat and bond not sticking until heated, um, I cut out the wrong one. I needed one of the reverse ones. <laughs> um, moving it would be challenging and without messing things up. So I need to leave it on my ironing board so that I can pr 
press it as soon as I'm ready. I have the right stem. Should have been paying attention to that. I forgot that we had any that were reversed. Come on, paper. There we go. And now it goes over under the umbrella. Like that. All right. The little stem, short stem, whatever they call it. This is going to go under the long stem, going up a little bit. There we go. The leaf goes right where the two stems meet. With the round part on the bottom. Go. And the two flowers. There. Come on. It doesn't want to come apart. The paper wants to stay with the flower. Okay. Now. Uh, yeah, I like that. How far down does this? They do go to the bottom. Then. There we go. Now we let it adhere. And you don't want to slide your iron when you're doing this because it will move, it can shift around the stuff. If you're using a different um, type of adhesive that does stick, then you don't have to worry about it. But with this, I need to make sure that I lift it and move it because otherwise, all of the work that I just did just putting these in specific spots will be for nothing. And of course, I didn't cover up the spot I wanted to cover up now that I'm looking at it. Where I messed up the blanket stitch. All right, I think everything is attached. 
So let me put it up on the wall so you all can see. Okay, so the flowers were supposed to be white. I made them blue. Um, the handle is gray, but it was supposed to be a darker gray, and I'm thinking it's blending in a lot with this background. Um, so I have to, I'm probably going to use black thread when I do the blanket stitch around it, and I'm going to make the black thread wider um, instead of just the little stitch like the, is our, our, we did around the water. I'm going to want to make sure that I do a wider stitch. Um, it says here, not, it doesn't say anything about the handle. It does have to tell me to quilt the spokes of the umbrella. So you know how an umbrella has a spoke and a spoke and a spoke? That's going to be part of the quilting. But it doesn't say to do anything to the handle. So I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do a wider blanket stitch and I'm going to really make that stand out. So it looks like it's Right now, it just blends in. You, I can see on my screen that you cannot see. That does not stand out at all. Um, and I should have thought about that. Because when I used fabric, it was a light gray fabric, which is what I used for all the backgrounds, so that's kind of silly. All right, um, what does it say to do next? Position the boots to the left of the umbrella at angles to each other as shown. Slip boot interiors under the top edge of boots. Add a stem, flower, and leaf as shown. Fuse appliques in place. Okay, so I need my boots now. I'm actually going to do the boots and the boot interior by themselves, and then I'll put the flower on. That way you can see how it all comes together. Okay. There's our boots and our boot interior. I think this came out better than I thought it was going to. I didn't think those two colors were going to go together very well, but they actually are okay. I still wish I had a bright pink instead of a dark red like that, but I will have to live with what I have.
Okay. So. Back we go to the ironing board to lay out our boots. And let's look here. This boot is going to go all the way down here. And then the interior of the boot is going to go underneath it. Like that. Boot number two is going to be very close, but slightly angled. Interior is going to go right in here. <laughs> it's not shaped quite, quite right. Let it sit. Do that all the time. It's like, no, just let it sit. And this is going to be the stem I use. I'm going to need one leaf and one flower. to use the blue flower. So here we go. Now we've got our little boots. They're walking. This fabric is a little bit lighter. Or, uh, no, I shouldn't say lighter. It's thinner. Um, and you can kind of, you can see the blue fabric through it. So something I didn't consider when purchasing the fabric, well, and I purchased it online, so I wouldn't have known how thick it was anyway. Um, but, it is, you can see through the fabric. It's too thin. 
So if you're using a fabric for applique, you want to pay attention to how thick it is, whether it's see-through or not. So if you hold it up, I can hold up this fabric, I cannot see through it. That fabric, you can. So now I'm going to put the flower and the leaf on, or the stem, the flower, and the leaf on. They go up top a bit. Now keep in mind when you're doing these appliques, you want to keep them away from the edge of the fabric because you are going to have a quarter inch seam that goes around on this. So you can, act, you can place these pieces anywhere that makes you happy. You don't have to follow the pattern on, in the book. You can style it however you want. Um, I tend to be a, a rule follower, so I follow the book. That's me. But you can do whatever you want. All right, so the flower's going to go mostly in the boot, but still off a bit. This goes on top of the flower. And then, where does it, they put it near, Okay, so here we go. Here is the boot with the flower in it. And the last thing we have to put on, oh, no, we have two things. Almost forgot. I need the bird. There's the bird. the bird. And the wing. go on the outside? Yes, it does. Okay. And a beak. That. There we go. I need the quilt, don't I? It's still on the wall. Kind of hard to place things on here if it's still hanging on the wall. All right. Birdie, birdie, birdie.
Come on. There we go. That did not want to come apart. Okay, so now I have to remember to cover up the piece that I didn't like there. It didn't sit right. There we go. The wing goes on the outside and the beak goes underneath. How far down does the beak go? A little bit lower. There we go. All right, so we have one stem, one leaf, and one flower left to go. We are at our time for today. So in part three, we will put the last flower onto our quilt and we will do all of our blanket stitching. Um, I'm going to have to look at it a bit and decide which way I, route I want to take for some of it. Um, because, like I said, I know on the umbrella handle I'm going to need to do black. Um, but I'm not certain if I want to do black all uh, throughout all of this. So I have to think about that. Give me, give me a little bit of time to think about it tonight and come up with a, a plan as to what I want to do. Um, I think I have a gold, so I could do that around that. Um, I have a red, so I know I could do red around there. And then I have a green. Um, so I may or may not use the same color on everything. We'll have to just see in part three. Thank you all for visiting with me, and we will see you next time on Carol Crafty Grandma. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and 